Christian Shul that is our host. So thank God that we are here all together, Baruch Hashem, called not Israel together, Baruch Hashem. Kibbutz Galiot we have. It's like from all kinds of exiles we come together and sit together. Dear women, we are in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim in the 10 days of atonement, the 10 days of Sarat Yamei Tshuva. I would like to tell you, on Rosh Hashanah there were three books that were open. Shlosha Sfarim Niftachu Rosh Hashanah. The first book was the book of life. God was sitting in the chair of judgment. And he opened the book of life. It's written by Masechet Rosh Hashanah. And over there the tzaddikim is written all, immediately. All the righteous people are written to life in the book of life. And the second book that has been opened is the book of death, God forbid. All of the wicked people are immediately written in the book of death on Rosh Hashanah. Shh, please pay attention, it's important. The third, the third book is the book of intermediate, which means a Sefer Abenonim, the book of intermediate, the ones that on the scale were not decided if it is either it's for life or for death. Dear women, until Sukkot, God decides about the intermediate people, which is most of the people, most of us are in the intermediate, which means Sefer Benonim. It's decided over there who will be, we will have the merit, we will be written to life, and we will be sealed on Yom Kippur to life. If we won't have the merit, God forbid, we will be written in the book of death. And it will be sealed on Yom Kippurim. On the day of Rosh Hashanah, the books are open. You are written in those books, all of us. The children of Israel are the first ones to go in front of Hashem. And I would like to tell you that all of the nations, all of the Goyim, they come after the children of Israel. On Rosh Hashanah, God judges all of his children, everyone. <coughs> but the first one is for Israel. We are the firstborn of Hashem. So we are the first one to be judged. We go in front of Hashem. He writes us, either in the book of life or the book of death, or in the book of intermediate. On Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah, God seals, seals it, which means... Maybe it's fine, right? Maybe it's fine, right? On Yom Kippur, he seals Uchotem et Adin. On Yom Kippur, dear women, we have 10 days of atonement. You know why we have 10 days? You know 10 is a, is a simple number. Because 10 is also the 10 commandments. Aseret Adibot. You know, the 10 is also the 10 Mamarot, the 10 sayings from Bereshit that God created them, with them the world. So the first one was on Chaphei Be'elul, on Aleph Betishrei. And then the last one of the 10 Mamarot is going to be on Yud Tishrei. This Mamar is Nase Adam, Nase Adam Betzalmenu Ubidmutenu. <laughs> Which means we should create a person in our image, said God. This is the 10th saying. The 10th saying is exactly on Yom Kippurim. The day, the last the day which God seals our judgment. Dear women, these 10 days are very important. On these 10 days we should do tshuva. You know what we, what we read on Minchav Yom Kippurim, dear women? You know what we read? We read the book of Yonah, the prophet Yonah. You remember the story of the prophet Yonah? Yonah was, God told Yonah to go to the city of Nineveh, which is in Syria, to go over there. They're all going, they're not Jewish. And he told, he told him, God told him, you have to tell them to repent. Because if they want to repent, I'm going to destroy the whole city. It was a big city. It takes three days, it says the Midrash, to go from one side of the city to the other side of the city. Three days. And Yonah did not want to go over there. And it says, you know why Yonah did not want to go over there? I'll explain it in a minute. Yonah decided that he's going to run from Hashem. Do you think we can run from Hashem? No. We cannot run from Hashem. So Yonah wants to run from Hashem from the prophecy. So what does he do? He says, you can have prophecy only on earth, on land. So it's better that I'll go to the ocean, to the sea, then I won't have the prophecy. And if I won't have the prophecy, 
God won't make me go and tell me in bed to do uh, to repent to do, to do an atonement. So he goes on a ship, let our shish, and over there on the ship, when they start to go to the into the ocean, there starts a seara. There's a big storm, and they are all almost killed. And they try and they pray to their gods, and Yonah is in the bot in the bottom of this of the ship. He sleeps over there. He doesn't even wake up. I will explain to you why. He doesn't even wake up. And they ask their gods to help them, but nobody helps them. So they want to know who caused this. So they put a pool, which means a grala, like a lottery, in order to know who did that. And the lottery falls on Yonah. So the Rabchavel, the captain of the ship, goes to him and wakes him up. Dear women, the Zara Kadosh says, all of this story is about a human being, about the soul and the body of the human being. Yonah means the soul that God gave us, this pure soul that he brought us into this world. And then it says that Yonah did not want to do the... God tells him, you have to be good in this world, you have to atoin. And Yonah runs away from the atonement, which means the soul, which is inside the body, does not want to listen to the word of God. So instead of listening to the word of God, it runs away. So when it runs away, it went into the ship. The ship is the body. This is the body that we are all dressed up with. The soul is dressed inside the body. So it went into the body and runs away. And it sleeps. Why, does, why did you not sleep? The Zohar Kadosh says, when a person has a lot of shells around him, which means shells of sins, how does he have shells and sins when he does not listen to the word of God? But he does not listen to his soul because what happens is um, in our minds we know what is the right thing to do. We already know that, but sometimes it's very hard for us to do that because we are, we are attracted to the physical world. So it's very hard to do whatever Hashem wants us to do because today objectively it's very hard. And it's a, it's a big, for example, I remember a woman calling me before Rosh Hashanah and she says, I have to tell you something. I spoke about Midat new to know how to be modest. And she says, you know, it's a big, it's a big Midat. It's a very hard Midat. To be modest, it's a very hard Midat in this world. In our world, in everything that we see around us, to be modest is very hard. So she told me, I would like to tell you, she really fought this Midat. For example, when she put the cover on her head, when she went with her husband with her friends, she saw her friends, all of them without cover. So she came back home, she, was starting, she started to fight with herself. Should I put the cover or take off the cover? Should I be with it? All of my friends are not with the cover, so why should I be with the cover? She used to call me and tell me that, and I used to tell her, listen, this is the evil spirit speaking to you. Don't listen to it, because if the evil spirit speaks to you, it means that Hashem is very happy with what, with what you did and He wants to elevate you spiritually to a higher place. Then, dear women, comes the evil spirit. It says, the Masechet Baba Batra, it says over there that the evil spirit, the evil inclination is also Satan and it's also the angel of death. It has three roles. It comes in order to make you, to cause you to make an avera, to, to sin. And then after you sin, it goes straight to heaven, to Hashem, and tells Hashem, you see, your child sinned. Now I want to punish him. Can I make him sick out for me? Can I do this and that to him? After that, then comes Malach Amarit. He says the same evil inclination. Says to Hashem, Dear Hashem, please may I take his soul. And only because Hashem is Erech Hapayim, He has, you know, He has uh, Sablanut. <laughs> patience. He has a lot of patience with us. He's Erech Hapayim. Because of that we are still alive. Otherwise, oy vavoy, what will happen to us? So He says, I'm waiting for my children because I know my child... Yes. Oh, in five minutes. I know my child will repent. I'm waiting for him. So Yona was sleeping. He did... Yona is a symbol for the soul that is in the body, in the ship. The ship is the body, and this is a symbol that the person is sleeping even though he does a off. What did the captain do? The captain came to him and tried to wake him up. He says, how can you sleep? The boat is rocking. It's like on rocks. 
there's a big storm and you're sleeping, he says. How can you sleep? Wake up, come upstairs, he says. So your now wakes up. It's exactly what the neshama, the soul tells a person. He tells us, why are you sleeping now? It's the ten days of atonement. You should repent. You should remember Hashem. You should wake up, dear women. This is the time to wake up. So your now wakes up and goes up to the surface of the ship. And on the ship they put, a, they do a lottery and they find that because of your na, there's a storm in the, sh in, in the ocean. And then what happens is they do not know what to do with him. They don't want to throw him into the ocean because your na tells them, throw me into the ocean. I did not listen to Hashem. He told me to go to the city in Inveh and to tell them to repent, but I did not listen to him. So be, when you throw me to the ocean, when you'll throw me to the ocean, you'll see that the sea will be calm. Now, dear women, listen very carefully. You know what they did? They, they tied him with, with the rope, and every time they lowered him into the sea, the ocean became calm. They pulled him up, the ocean became a, a, a storm. Again, they lowered him into the sea, the ocean was calm. They pulled him up, there was a big storm. So he said, please, leave me. So they took and they disconnected the rope, he went into the ocean and the whale swallowed him. He was three days in the belly of the whale. This is, the Zarkadosh says, this is what happened to the Neshama in the body after a person passes away. The whale symbolizes the kevel, the grave, the earth, when a person goes back to earth. For three days he repents. Listen, dear women, after three days that a person is in the grave, his me'ai, intentions open up. And it says that everything that you ate in this world, I'm going to eat you now. Then the worms go out and start working on the parts of the body because the soul is judged with the body. The soul is not separated. For 30 days, the soul is punished with the body. There's chibuta kever. Thank you. I have a good one. Amen. Dear women, listen very carefully. When a person passes away, first of all, there's an angel that comes to him and asks him for his name. And the name that the person should give is the pasuk from the Torah that starts with his first letter of his name and the last and ends with the last letter of his name. So the angel asks him, when a person is wicked, he does not remember his name. Then the angel starts to hit him. He hits him so harshly with the body and the soul inside that all of his body is separated from each part, separates from another part. After that, dear women, the worms start eating him. It starts with a, with a place that we sin the most. Usually it's the tongue, it's the mouth, it's slandering, it's the shonara. Usually there goes. And then if we went with our legs or did, or did sins with our hands, then our hands and then our legs. And then with our heart, if we did not have a good heart, if we were not happy for others, if we felt sad, if somebody had a simcha, we, we were so jealous, we felt sad instead of happiness for him. If we did not understand what is our role in this world. You know, dear women, what is our role in this world? The Arizal says this. Dear women, you know, our generation, it's very important. Our generation, Arizal says, it's the generation of, the, of Egypt. You remember the generation of Egypt in Chumash Mot? The, before they went out of Egypt, we are the generation of Egypt. We are closing the circles, Girat Ma'agal. That's why it's written that Ba'achri Ka'anim, B'zchut Nashim Tzad Kaniyot Nigalu Amisrael Mimitzrayim U'B'zchut Anati Din Nigal. Which means, because of righteous women, we were saved from Egypt, and because of righteous women, we are going to be saved in the days of Mashiach. Amen. Dear women, we are closing the circle. We are the generation of Egypt. We are. I have to. Sigi. In one minute, I'll do that. Sigi, one minute. We need to add to the dough two tablespoons of oil and just. I'll just finish this idea and I'll do it in a minute. 
Dear women, listen very carefully. We are the generation of Mashiach. It, it all started. You know, the army of heaven is already here, dear women. Mashiach is here, but he has to show himself. And it depends on us, and with these words, we'll add, we'll add now the oil, and then I'll continue. טוב, עכשיו זה נדלק, אבל אני לא יודעת אם זה עובד כל הזמן. So, 
Okay, he decided to throw him out of the kingdom. So he threw him out of the kingdom, but he sent messengers just to look at him, to see, to be sure if everything's okay with him. So this son went out of the kingdom and said, what do I care? I will manage. So he went from village to village, from village to village, and fil until he, find, he found a nice person that told him, you know what, I will take you to my home and I will teach you melacha, I will teach you a profession so you can earn your own living. So he lived with him and we, meanwhile a year passed, two years passed, three years passed, four years passed, and the, the son of the king did not even remember, but remember where he came from. He felt comfortable, he felt part of this, of this village that he came to, and he did not care about anything. The king said, wow, my son doesn't even remember me. He doesn't call me, he doesn't send me any message, nothing. So he told all of his servants, he told the servants, go and take that person that hired him, take him and put him in jail. So they took the person and put him in jail. So his, the son of the king did not have now food to eat. So he wrote a letter to his father. And one day the letter comes to his father. And, and you know, the servants come to the king. They are so happy for the king. Your son sent you a letter, he, they say. So they give him the letter, you know, on a tray. And the king is so nervous because it's his son. He says, wow, I'm sure my son says... Father, I love you. I'm so sorry. I want to be back at home. Please forgive me. I know you love me. You want me back at home. So he opens the letter. He opens the letter, dear women. And what he sees over there is, Abba, tishlach li keset. Father, send me money. Even without a please. Father, send me money. So the father says, what shall I do? He does not repent yet. So he says, okay, I'll, I'll send him money. He sent him a little bit, a small amount of money. He sends him over there. And meanwhile, the son continues and the father says, what shall I do? That's not right. I have to make him see that he's in the wrong path. So he tells his, his soldiers, you should, God bless you, be well. So he tells his, he tells his soldiers, go to him and put him in jail. Put him in jail. So he goes to him, and they go to him, the soldiers, and put him in jail. And once he's in jail, he sends another letter to his father. And the father is waiting, is anxiously. And the, he says, the father opens the envelope, and he sees that it's written over there, Abba tutsiuti me'akele. So he says, take me out of jail. Father, take me out of jail. So now the father says, what shall I do with him? So he takes him out of jail. And the, the son goes away from the, uh, from the place, from the jail, and starts searching for a village. Meanwhile, the father decides, now I have to do something uh, different. So he sends his soldiers, and he goes after them to watch them, and he tells them, I want you to hit my son, to hit him so harshly that he will repent. But don't forget, he's my son. So when you hit him, think about it, that he's my son. So the soldiers catch him in, in the forest and they start hitting him, you know, they feel, they feel good with themselves. <laughs> so they hit him and he tells them, the son, how dare you hit me? Don't you know that I'm the son of the king? I'm, I'm, I'm the one, I'm, I'm going to be the heir of the kingdom? How dare you? And they say, exactly, they say, excuse me? You are going to be the heir, you're going to be the king? You're the son of the king? Look how you're dressed. Look where you came from. You came from jail. You don't have anything. You're not the son of the king. And they hit him more. And they, they, they ask him, they tell him, tell me, where is your palace? Maybe the village that you live to live? You know, the small hat that you lived inside? Is that your palace? So they started laughing. And where are all the food, the good food that a king should eat? And the clothing of a king? And where are your servants? So while they're asking him this and hitting him, the son realized, wow, I am the son of the king. I used to have servants. People used to come and give me food and drink and everything. I used to be the top, you know, in the pyramid, I was the top of the people. I was the one that can be gracious with all of the people. I was the one to show them the light. I was the one to help them with judgment. And now look at me, where am I? Like he woke up, he was waking up. And then he said, wow, 
father, Hashibeni Alecha Ashuva. He says, please return me back to him. The father, I'm telling you, is hiding. He listens. He says, please, father, Hashibeni Alecha Ashuva. He says, please take me back. I want to be back with you, father. Chatati Aviti Pashaki. I did wrong. I did not do what she want. And this is the same thing what us, the children of Israel, are doing, dear women. We, because we forgot who we are, it says in Chumash Dvarim, the parashat, it, it says over in Chumash Dvarim, it says that God gave the Torah not only to the people who were standing on Mahmad al Sinai, but to all of the generations, the ones that were not there. We are part of them, we are only reincarnation of those people, dear women. We are the ones that went out of Egypt. We are the last generation of Mashiach. This is the time that we need to ask for Mashiach. Why? Because God says, I'm so happy that you came to a Torah lesson. I'm so proud of you, my children. I, I'm happy that you enjoyed the Torah lessons. But my children, don't you want my kingdom? You want my Torah, but you do not want my kingdom? You think that but only studying the Torah, but not asking me to go back from exile, because the Shekhinah after Yirmiyahu, you remember the first exile, Galut Bait Rishon, the first exile of the children of Israel after the ruining of the first temple, when they went to Babylon, when they went to Iraq of today, it says that Yirmiyahu, the prophet, wanted to go with them, so he tried to tie himself, you know, with the Shalshalot, when they took him as prisoners. And, and Nebuzaradan was told by, by, by the king of Babylon that he's not allowed to touch Irmiyahu because Irmiyahu is the prophet who told them that they will be in exile. And another thing told them the king of Babylon, he told them, he told his general that he has to see that they won't repent because he said if they will say that they are sorry, God will forgive them. And if he will forgive them, he will punish us for exiling them. So he said, in order that this will happen, if you see somebody trying to daven or to repent or to cry to Hashem, kill him immediately. So they could not repent. And only when they came to the rivers of Babylon, only there you see in Tehillim, in the Song of Skip David, we sat on the rivers, on the edge of the rivers of Babylon, and we sat down and cried. Because only then they had the permission to cry to that and to Hashem. Dear women, it says that Yirmiyah wanted to go to them, to, with them to exile, but then the Shekhinah said to, to Yirmiyah, if you will go to the, with them to the exile, I will stay in the land of Israel. And if you will stay, Yirmiyah the prophet, in the land of Israel, I will go with them to exile. Dear women, Yirmiyah decided to stay in the land of Israel because he said, I'm a human being. I cannot help the, the way the Shekhinah can help them. So the Shekhinah is in exile until now. Until Mashiach comes. Do you understand what I'm saying? This part of Hashem, part of the name of Hashem, part of this of Hashem is all of this world with all of the children of Israel wherever they are in exile. The Shekhinah did not go back to the land of Israel until all of us will go back and Mashiach will be here. In order that this will happen, we need to ask that Mashiach will be. It's not enough to ask by mouth, you know, only with our mouths. We need with our hearts to ask. We need to want it. I know that, you know, the regular day, when it passes day after day, it's, it's easy to, get, to come, you know, accustomed to, the, to everything that happens in life. We feel very secure, and we have a home, we have children, we are all around the, all the things that we do every day, the regular um, routine of the day, Shaddam, the regular routine of the day, so we forget, and it's more convenient, but dear women, this is not convenience. As long as the, uh, the Shekhinah is in exile, we are in exile. As long as the Shekhinah is out of the land of Israel, we have danger above our heads. Everything already started, dear women. It's as you see, uh, until now we had hurricanes, we had, we had earthquakes, and everything is, is more severe than the, the first one. Each nature disaster is severe than the one that was before that. It's because we are in the end of days. It's because that the soldiers of heaven are already here. It's called Abamim in Hebrew, but they are here. Everything is already here. 
it says that already the third temple goes down towards up because we are already stepping in the end of days. And because of us, dear women, we can bring the Shekhinah back home and Mashiach and save the whole children of Israel, including Amen. our husbands. Amen. How did the women in Egypt do that? Because when our husbands did not have enough faith to, to be strong and to believe that Hashem, everything that Hashem does is for the best, we, the women, encouraged them. We, the women, told them, don't forget, God said He's going to save us. Don't forget, we are the ones that told our husbands in Egypt. And because of that, all of the children of Israel were saved out of Egypt. Because we saw to that, that they won't look anywhere else. The women in Egypt used to dress nicely only for their husbands. They used to be very tsanua, very modest. They dressed nicely for their husbands so they will do mitzvah priyah or aviyah, even though there's a, there was a bad decree. A decree that all of the bones, the, the, the sons, will be thrown into the Nile. Even though they did everything they can to help their husbands. They used to, make, they used to give them warm water for their feet and fish to feed them. And they used to encourage them. They said, God said, which means that there will be a Mashiach that will help us. It was Moshe Rabbeinu that was Moshiach. Dear women, Moshe Rabbeinu was Mashiach, the Masha Hayahu Shia, which means even Bachrit Ayamim, the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu Haya Meimana will be part of Mashiach, Mashiach ben David. And he will come like a commoner. We will not know that he is even Mashiach. And it will be a problem among the children of Israel because there will be people who will think that maybe he should come as a Hasidic or maybe he should come as a Haredi or maybe he should come a different shapes and size but dear women he will be a simple person that's what's written in the Midrash and in Sanhedrin and in the prophets he will be a simple person because the most important thing is Tamim Hashem God said be modest be humble and be Tamim Innocent, innocent. innocent. With, with Hashem your God, which means right. don't be a politician with God. Don't, you know what I mean, politician? People do things, but in their hearts they are not clean. And they think that Hashem does not know that. Hashem does not seek the politicians. He does not care about them. He seeks the true heart of the person. Because, you know, to worship Hashem is very simple. You just need to be honest. Honest and modest. Because look... <coughs> I told you about the word of repentance, tshuva. So look what it stands for. Let's look at the word tshuva, okay? So the top in tshuva means tamim tiye im Hashem elokecha, which means you should be honest. It's more than honest. Mimut is more than honest. Tamim tiye im Hashem elokecha. Will I naive? Naive. Complete. You should be honest with, with Hashem, your God. And then look, devoted. the Shin, it's more than devoted. It's, it's all, not only honest. Righteousness. It's, righteous. righteous. It's righteous to be with Him. It's not only with Hashem. Once you are righteous with Hashem, once you have the fear of God above you, you will be righteous with human beings because you will know that if you won't be righteous, God is going to punish you and severely. So tamim tiyei Hashem elokecha, and then shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. Look what it stands for, which means I see the name of God in front of me always. I remember God in everything that I do. When I walk home from work, I remember Hashem that He looks at me, that there's an eye that is looking at me, an ear that listens to everything that I take out of my mouth, and the hand that is writing everything in a book. Everything is written. Don't fool yourselves, dear women, that it's not written. There's someone who sees, someone that hears, and someone that writes everything that we do in this world. And then this is Be'ahavta Le'reacha Kamocha. Which means you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. The same way that you don't want to be hurt, you shouldn't hurt anyone else. The same way that you want to be treated, you should treat others. 
and don't have a, ba a bad eye over anyone because God gives you exactly what you need for your fixing in this world. Not more and mo not less. Yes. Can I ask you something? There is the expression that the mother gives the eye to the, the children. This is true. <laughs> Actually, the, don't, I don't know, somehow they, they're saying that if the most the bad eye of the some different group or evil eye, the mother gives them to the children. No, it, it, I'll explain evil eye, a person could give even him, even to himself. Yes. Listen, yes, evil eye, a person can give even to himself. So it's better to say Ben Porat yourself when you say good things about people. Ben Porat yourself in the Jewish religion is without evil eye. Bli This is Ben Porat yourself. This is the blessing that Yaakov gave. Yeah, that Yaakov gave Yosef a tzaddik, his son Yosef, because you know he had a lot of jealousy upon him. All of his brothers were jealous of him. So he gave him this blessing, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat Alein, not Sadali Shur. So this is the blessing that we won't have an evil eye. So you always say Ben Porat Yosef. But you should love and you should cherish your neighbor exactly as you cherish yourself. And then we have Bet. Bechol Drachecha Deu, which means you should know Hashem in everything you do in what we eat, in what we drink, when we are intimate with our husbands, when we wash ourselves, when we do everything in this world, when we walk, when we sleep, everything, we should remember Hashem. I forgot that. In all of your ways you should know Hashem. And then the hay is Hatsna. Which means you should be modest with God and pay attention that when we speak about modesty, we see the name of God of judgment. Dear women, we are not, modesty is not only the clothing that we dress up with. Modesty is also what we take out of our mouth, the words that we take, the way we handle ourselves, the way we walk, this is modesty. The way we are handling ourselves towards other people, this is also modesty. God says that when we are not modest, God forbid, we cause others to sin. Because you know the most important thing that we should do is not cause people to sin with their eyes. And when do they sin? Because when we see something we not, with our eyes, then the heart starts pumping. And then we look another side. We look again at the same thing. And then, God forbid, we can come to a sin. So it says that in order that we won't do that, we women should be modest. Dear women, understand, this is... You know, this is the last prisha, this is the last mixing of the, the generation of Mashiach. We are the last mixing. So, you know, sometimes I hear that there are bonkers that they are preparing in order that people will be saved at the end of days. Dear women, listen very carefully. You won't be saved if God doesn't want to save you. It's true that there will be barely people in the world after Mechem and Gog and Magog, after the end of days. It's true, it's, it, will be, it will be like a third of the world and less than that after that because God is going to clean to distillate every, every, all the people that will stay. What will happen is that there will be a few, like thousands and thousands I'm speaking, of people that will stay. When the, the dead are going to uh, rise. rise from the dead, everybody is going to, all of the dead are going to rise. But they won't stay, only the righteous among them will stay. All of them, most of them, will be dead, will go back to hell and won't stay. Dear women, have pity. We should have pity on our souls. It says, you know, the Lubavitcher Rabbi said that beautiful thing in one of his sikhos, and I think it's a beautiful thing because he said, I cannot understand how come, listen very carefully, how come we have so many minyanim? You know, a minyan is a ten men that stand and pray. You know, even one minyan should have brought Mashiach already. We are already past the Holocaust, and I told you already over here that Rabbi Shalom Shabbos is said in his book, Chandat Yamim, that 300 years before the 7,000, 
the days of Mashiach will start. So it's all we are already, already part of it. The Holocaust is part of it. The, the land of Israel is part of it. Everything is part of it. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe asked, how come Mashiach does not come? If we have so many millionim of men all over the world, in the land of Israel, all over, how does not Mashiach come? Why doesn't he come? You know why? Because we don't truly wish for him and we don't have truly If we were all of us as one person, if we were not selfish, we will not think about ourselves first. We will remember that what God gave me is exactly enough for me in this world to do my fixing. I don't need more than that. Anyway, I come empty. I come, you know, naked totally. And I go to the earth naked. I do not take the beautiful home. I do not take my money. I do not take this beautiful car. I do not take the bank accounts. Nothing goes with me except for my good deeds and my mitzvah. Nothing. If we will remember that, we won't have jealousy, we won't have hatred, and we won't have competition. We don't need any competition because we will understand that what we have is exactly what we need in this world. So exactly what, exactly what we need in this world. So dear women, this is the basic things that we need. I'll give you an example of Tamim Tiei Mashem Elokecha, the first thing that you will be um, honest with, with Hashem your God. It says about a shepherd, there was a boy that did not learn how to read Aleph Bet, the Hebrew Aleph Bet. So he, he was an orphan and he did not know, not know what, where to go. And there was a, a rich person that had a lot of sheep. So he hired him, so he hired him to be his shepherd. So the boy used to go with the sheep in the morning, early in the morning, and he used to say to himself, God, I want to daven to you, I want to pray, but I cannot pray. I don't have the tools to pray to you. So he said, you know what, God? I'm going to decide, to decide on a prayer that I'm going to pray to you. So he said to himself, what shall I say? So he said, God, listen. Here, I have an idea. From now on, this is going to be my prayer, he said. God, for, uh, you know that I'm a shepherd, and I take the sheep out and see that they will, I'll feed them and everything, he says. So God, listen to me very carefully. I'm a shepherd, and if you have sheep, God, I want to tell you that I'm going to take your sheep, and I'm going to look after them, and count them, and feed them, and give them water, and everything you want, God, and I have to tell you something, from everyone else, I, I take money for that, but from you, God, I won't take money, because I love you, God, and from you, I won't take money. You know, this is a prayer from heart. This opened the gates of heaven. The Midrash says, this prayer opened on that Yom Kippur, the gates of heaven. Because this was a true love from the, his heart to Hashem. He wasn't jealous. He was satisfied with what he had. He, had, he is, was only a shepherd. He didn't have anyone. He had the sheep and Hashem. That's what he had. So he said, God, because I love you from you, I won't take money. I won't do that. I will enjoy, I will enjoy taking care of your sheep. Please, God, bring me your sheep. And there was another story, a beautiful story that I love to tell it on young, before young people. It was about the Maharash. It says that he went with his, one of his students, one uh, Mutsay Shabbat, and he's, he waited near the window of a tailor. The tailor, the, 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 the town's tailor. So they both were watching, and they saw something very weird. The tailor took two cups of wine, beautiful cups of wine. He put them on, on the table, and he started pouring wine to the two cups. After they were filled, he mumbled something from his mouth. He took the wine, said lechaim, and drank it. Mm -hmm. Then he mumbled something out of his mouth. He took the other cup of wine, he said lechaim, and drank the wine. So the Maharaj, was, his face was shining, he, he was very happy, but he still did not understand what happened there. But he didn't want, he was embarrassed to ask the Maharaj, so he said to himself, tomorrow morning I have to go to the tailor, I have to ask him. So, and you know, he was so curious that he didn't even think about it, that maybe it will be embarrassing to the tailor because he didn't know that somebody's watching him through the window. So he went the next day to the tailor and he said, I have to ask you a question. We were passing by your home and from the window we saw you drinking two cups of wine. The tailor was astonished. How did it seem? But he said, the Maharaj was there also. 
and he was smiling. He said, can you please tell me what did you do? So he says to him, listen, I, I, I'll start from the beginning. I'm a tailor, Hayat, tailor is Hayat. I'm a tailor and usually I have a lot of panasa, a lot of income. I have the gvir, you know, the rich person in the, in the town that comes to me. I used to do all his clothing and he used to bring me customers. I had a lot of customers, he said. And I said thank you to Hashem. Every morning I woke up, I said batikin, which means I said my Israel be'anet achama, when the sun always, already starts to go out. I said the prayer of Shacharit. Then, before Mincha, I read Tehillim. I said, God, thank you. I read Tehillim and David Mincha. Mari, before Mari, I studied Mishnayot. I studied the Shas. And I David Mari. And he says, and I was so happy. I said, God, thank you. So he says, but then this big rich person, he went out of the town. So part of my parnasa was, uh, was away. It was cut. My parnasa was cut. I said, God, what's this? What did you do to me, okay? You took out my parnasa part of it? He said, okay, I'm, sto I'm stopping to say Mishnayot. God said, okay, you stop to say Mishnayot. So God took more of his parnasa. I said, okay, God, this is war. And I'm not saying to heal him. Oh. Then he stopped to, do, to say that Mari. So God took another piece of his parnasa. And then he stopped saying Mincha, so God took another piece of his parnasa. And then he, he stopped saying Shachari, and God took most of it. He barely had bread on his, on, on his table for him and his children. Yes. But then Slichot came, the days of Slichot of the month of Elul. And he said to himself, God, listen, we are in a state of war, we are not speaking, he said. So I can't go and say Slichot. But then he said to himself, wait. But it's almost Rosh Hashanah, and then Yom Kippurim, and I have to go on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, I have to go and bless Hashem. How can I not go? But then if I'm bloggers, you know, if I don't speak on the terms of not speaking with Hashem, how can I go on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim to the synagogue and daven to Hashem? He said, I cannot do that. I have to, to find myself another, another way to do that. So I said, you know what, God, I have to do Sholem Itcha. I need to make peace with you. So he says, the same night that you came, I, I spoke with God. I said, God, listen, I know you have complaints. I stopped davening the three davens that we say every day. I stopped saying Tehillim and I stopped saying Mishnayot. But God, I'm not to blame only. I have also complaints, he says. You stopped my Parnassah. So you cut my Parnassah, I cut my davening, he says. This is, it's very familiar, it's naive. So he says, God, but now I would like to come to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim to the, to the Shul and Daven. So he says, God, I, I, I want to have a peace offering between both of us because I can't go to the Shul and Daven to you when we are in not speaking terms. So he says, I poured wine in two cups, one for God and one for me, he says. <laughs> I put the, in two cups, one for God and one for me. And then he says, when I took my cup, I said, God, thank you for everything. I forgive you. Please forgive me. I said, the time and I drank it. Then I took God's because, you know, you cannot drink the wine. <laughs> so he says, I took the wine, the, the cup of wine of God, and I also put it to the to heavens. And I said, God, forgive me. Be nice to me. Here, I'm, a, I'm your son. I'm coming back to you, he says. So please forgive me, he said, Lechaim, and he drank the other cup. He said, now I'm in peace terms of Hashem. So now I can go to Slichot, and now I can go to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim. And dear women, why did he say Lechaim? Because there's a secret in the word Lechaim, to life. There's a secret in the word, the Hebrew word of Lechaim. The Hebrew word of Lechaim, look. In the Hebrew word of Lechaim, there's a, there's a secret. Dear women, look over here. When we say Lechaim, when two Jewish people say Lechaim, they, without even knowing it, they are blessing each other for good parnasa, for good income. And why? Shh. Why? Because it's Lechem and the name of God, the two Yudim. Lechem is bread. And the two Yudim is the name of God. So when we say Lechai, we bless ourselves with Parnassah. 
So dear women, with these words, I would like to bless all of us. Shagia Mashiach, the Kenim Mara Bemenu, Amen. Shagia Mevasar Eliyahu, Eliyahu Shmiyahu, Mara Bemenu, Shagia Ben David, Eliyahu Bezakul Etov. You don't go yet. Wait, see.